the kickoff presented by Coca-Cola that day, live on ESPN Plus, starting at 12 noon. A five-set thriller between first place Coppin State and Delaware State highlighted the weekend in volleyball, with the Eagles coming away with the win to remain in first place, just percentage points ahead of defending MEAC champion Howard, which is on a five-match winning streak after defeating North Carolina Central and South Carolina State this past weekend. This weekend's matches get underway on Thursday with an important match between the Bison and the Hornets in Dover, Delaware. Maryland Eastern Shore opened its 2022-23 bowling season this past weekend by going undefeated in winning the Colonial Lanes Classic hosted by Tulane University. The Hawks earned their first tournament victory since October of 2019, and the two-time defending MEAC champion North Carolina A&T State finished fourth in the same event. In other action, Delaware State came in second in the Mount St. Mary's shootout, and Morgan State was eighth in the Motif Penguin Classic hosted by Youngstown State. The first championships of the 2022-23 academic year are less than two weeks away. The 2022 MEAC Cross Country Championships hosted by Delaware State will be held on Saturday, October 29th, at the Delaware State Outreach and Research Center in Smyrna, Delaware, as Norfolk State will look to sweep the men's and women's team titles for the third straight year. The men's 8K race will get underway at 11 a.m. with the women's 5K race following at noon. Visit Championship Central at MEACsports.com for more information. And for more information on the MEAC and its 14 sponsored sports, as well as to learn how to join the MEAC Nation Association, please visit our official website at www.meacsports.com. You can also follow the MEAC on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at MEAC Sports, and subscribe to the MEAC Digital Network on YouTube. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, before we begin today, I'd like to remind everybody that to ask a question, use the raise hand feature in Zoom, and when acknowledged, please state your name and the media outlet you're representing. All right, now we'll begin with Howard's head coach, Coach Larry Scott. Good morning, Coach Scott, how are you? Good morning, how's everybody doing? Doing well. All right, Coach, can you give us an opening statement about Saturday's game against Harvard? Oh man, uh, physical, uh, tough outing for us, tell the two halves for us uh, and our football team. Uh, learned a lot from that game. Um, Harvard was a very formidable opponent uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, they're, you know, strong physical football team that were well coached um, and, and, you know, had a lot of presented a lot of challenges in a lot of ways and uh, loved some of the things that we did. Uh, did not like some of the things that we did. Um, and like I said, it was a tale of two halves for us. Um, was hoping to gain some momentum coming back out the second half. Uh, that didn't happen. And before you know it, you know, real quick, uh, a couple of plays, we find ourselves down two scores uh, and, and, you know, kind of battling, trying to battle to stay in it and, and, and those type of things. But um, some hidden yardage, some special teams, things that we really needed to um, clean up, kind of short up there uh, and hurt us there and bit us in the end. Um, however, uh, football team is uh, good spirits, good health. Um, right now, coming out of it as healthy as we could be, uh, being as physical as the last two weeks have been for us. Uh, but super excited about, you know, getting out of the preseason uh, and stepping into our real season. It's conference time, baby. So it's time to go, man, go. We're excited. Awesome, Coach. And like you mentioned, conference play starts for the Bison this week. What can we expect against Delaware State? I mean, you know, a really good opponent, man. I mean, you, you turn on the tape and there, there's no – um, there's there's no hiding that at the end of the day they they play defensive football the way you want to see defensive football played uh, with a lot of guys too they play a lot of guys rotate a healthy front uh, they run to the ball they're physical uh, they're tough they're stingy uh, they don't give up anything in the red zone and obviously they're playing good defense to be number one in the conference um, in a lot of categories uh, including the red zone so um, they're a very formidable opponent for us a big challenge for us. Um, that way, and then, you know, on offense, they're a possession team. They do a really good job just kind of letting the game come to them. And, you know, they're good in the kicking game. So, you know, they're they're riding the wave of going and spoiling homecomings. And, and I know they're going to come in with that kind of attitude and mindset uh, of their head coach, which is built around toughness and those type of things. So we know what we're getting ourselves into uh, with this bunch. and uh, But we'll be ready to go. 
All right, Coach, those are my questions. We'll now begin with the media questions, beginning with Nate Henry Jr. Good morning, Coach. How you doing this morning? Hey, how we doing, man? Good, good. Nate Henry, our University Sports Information Media Group. Um, uh, you, do you have an update on the status of quarterback Quentin Williams? Quentin Williams is back. He, he's back and practicing, uh, doing all those things. And I, I'm going to go ahead and just put that all out there real quick. Nothing's more important than the overall health of, of football players when it comes to that and uh, winning a football game and doing those type of things and putting their health in, in jeopardy is never going to be something that we, we do in this program. So uh, we, we uh, made the decision. Uh, to ensure that Quentin was, you know, 100% healthy and, and ready to go and be himself and be the talented, you know, strong arm quarterback that he is. So uh, we're excited to have him back. And more importantly, that he's, you know, clear um, and clean and, and got a clear bill of health and ready to go play football again. So we're good to go. Yes, sir. Appreciate it. How do you evaluate the play of Jalen Tobert in his first start? Oh, man. I mean, you go out and you go, okay, man, redshirt freshman. Uh, you know what you're going to kind of get against a really, really good defense. I mean, you don't walk into it and, and, and challenge your red shirt, you know, freshman quarterback uh, with his first start with all the different looks and fronts and coverages and different things that he saw. Uh, for the most part, I thought he did, a, a, you know, a good job, made some critical mistakes and critical areas in, in, in situations where we put our defense in bad situations, short fields uh, because of some of those mistakes. Uh, but, you know, when you're playing a, a freshman quarterback like that, you, you don't want those things to happen. Uh, but when they do, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of one of those deals where you got to go up oh, as a coach and say, hey, you know, some of those things can happen and will happen to a young quarterback uh, in those in, in those in, in those situations. But, um, you know, it felt like it's definitely something we can build upon. Uh, and this kid, that kid has a bright future uh, here in our, on our team and in our program. Yes, sir. Thank you. It's homecoming. It's the first game of the conference play. And you finally get a chance to play before the students and alums in Green Stadium. Talk about the that means what that means in terms of significance. Um, having been on the road for most of the season, um, the whole season, you go through it and go like you did. It's the first time, first time I've ever had a, a home schedule itinerary laid on my desk as to what it looks like to play at home and actually play in Green Stadium um, and, and and be here. So it's a lot of things swirling around that. Uh, yeah, it, it's homecoming. Yeah, it's our first time to play at home. Uh, but more importantly, it's it's game it's game one of our true season, of our real season, uh, and what it's all about, and everything that we've learned. Um, because I, I often say to our guys, we don't we don't lose. You know, you don't lose if you're not if you learn something from each and every opportunity that you get to go do, not just play football, but in life. Um, so to have an opportunity to uh, to learn all the things that we've learned the hard way, a little bit do it all on the road with all of the challenges and, and all of that, that that brings to as well, uh, I think has, uh, you know, sharpened us, iron sharpens iron, and we're ready to, to take on this conference schedule um, and, and excited to open it up, uh, being at home and it's homecoming. So it can't get any better. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thanks, I appreciate you. Dr. Cavill? Yes, this is Kenyatta. Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Scott. Doc, how we doing? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. Want to talk a little bit more about the Harvard game and then get into this big conference game coming up at home. Just in terms of your defense, particularly what they were able to do in the first half, how do you assess your defensive play in that game and who stood out? Oh, man, I'll tell you what, collectively, we challenged them. And we had one series there where we were still like, Hey, we're still missing too many tackles. And after that, we kind of shored up the tackling, which was great for us to see, you know, after, you know as, as hard as we worked on it uh, in the bye week. Um, I, I thought being able to play as many guys as now we're starting to play on defense and as we tried to build and get ourselves prepared for conference schedule um, and playing a lot of guys. So you, you saw a, a, a couple of different guys, young linebackers in there, um, you know, some of our younger corners stepping in and playing and being able to roll. Uh, you know, our front and playing about, you know, six to eight guys up front, too, uh, was was really big for us. But uh, to come in there with all their schemes and how they run the football and those type of things and really neutralize that that back that they have, it's, it's pretty doggone good. Uh, can probably play in a lot of places across America. Uh, but to neutralize him and be able to get him on the ground and, and, and tackle well and, and kind of new, really, um, you know, confuse their defense I mean, their offense a little bit and, and have them playing on their heels um, was, was awesome to see. Uh, our guys accepted what that challenge was um, and kind of knew what we were getting themselves into. And then offensively, we put them in a couple of bad situations, short fields, 
uh, that they had to deal with. I mean, it, it never was a, a deal where Harvard actually took the ball and drove it, you know, kind of down our throats or whatever, you know, a critical mistake deep in our territory with a turnover here or there and giving them, you know, the ball at the 28 yard line it ain't going to do, you know, it ain't going to help us. Uh, so very happy with what, you know, guys were able to do. I was happy with our, the play of our safety. Um, our safeties played really well, we thought, in that game, uh, which they needed to, you know, both coverage and in the run game. Uh, and not front, uh, really stepped it up and did a really nice job inside uh, with all their power schemes and different things like that, taking on double teams, splitting double teams and playing physical in there. So uh, excited about our front, sadly. Thank you, Coach. When you get into that, I ask defensive, particularly because uh, what I can tell from Delaware State, uh, really physical on run the ball. So you have that same type of uh, framework in a lot of ways and your defense is going to have to be uh, able to tackle um, well as you have, have talked about the last couple of weeks talk about schematically what do you want to do at least from a defensive perspective specifically against Delaware State after watching the film so, number one you know you look at their head coach he's you know offensive lineman you know a guy that's gonna they're gonna play the game at the line of scrimmage <laughs> he's gonna make it a it's gonna be a rugged you know put them all in a you know you can put them all in the phone booth and here we go it's gonna be a slug out fest and uh and, and when you get to this type of play uh, during this time of year, uh, obviously it's critical that you're playing well on, up front on both sides of the ball um, because games are won in the trenches, and okay. there's no doubt about it. When you need to establish the run and run the football, you need to be able to do that, and you have to stop the run. I mean, absolutely stop people from being able to run the football against you. Um, and so, you know, it, it's going to be a line of scrimmage game. Uh, and then when the ball is out on the perimeter and those type of things, I think uh, you got to make the plays that are there, there to be made because they're, they're not, there's not going to be a whole lot of opportunities with what they do coverage wise, what they do at the front. Uh, it's going to be very, it's going to be challenging. They do a really good job defensively in this. No wonder, you know, you don't have to look around and look where that top of the MEAC and as far as uh, defensively, statistically. Um, and when you turn on the tape, it matches. Uh, they're a very, a, a very good defensive football team. One quick follow up in terms of the schedule the challenges of playing so many games on the road or even neutral sites early, you know, some good parts of that about television uh, part of that, but will you get any more um, input into scheduling next year or moving forward? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Moving forward, we're going to be very cognizant of, of what that looks like here uh, in the future and, and what that can kind of do to your football team as you work through it and roll through the weeks and, uh, and, and how that, you know, the, the lingering effects of that starts to affect you when you we can look at it, you're in week six of the season and you haven't been at home and you've been getting home three or four, you know, five o'clock in the morning and still trying to work a regular schedule. And then you play one week off one week and then you're playing two Ivy League opponents right, right before you go into conference play. Uh, absolutely. That will be looked at uh, here and, and strategically <laughs> moved around a little bit better uh, as we continue to move forward. Understand. Appreciate sharing it. Thanks, Doc. Jeremy Huber. Hello, Coach Scott. Jeremy Huber, Harvard, uh, How Howard broadcast team. Um, Kenny Gallup had 16 tackles against the Harvard team that it ain't easy tackling, and they're really physical. What does that say about Kenny that he kind of stepped up to that challenge? Yeah, that, that, he, Kenny's a physical kid. He, he likes the game that way. Uh, that's his mindset and mentality. There's no one or two years in a row. I mean, even last year as a freshman, he led the MEAC in tackles. Uh, and, and he's off and, and running and doing that again this year. He, he's a uh, he's a playmaker, but he's a physical nature kid by nature. So he, he mixes it up that way, not afraid to mix it up that way. Um, you know, we really attack, you know, just fundamentals and techniques of tackling. Uh, and it's something that he works really hard at. And it's something that he takes a lot of pride in. Uh, he, he's becoming kind of the heart and soul of, truly of our secondary. Uh, and with his leadership through his play is becoming the heart and soul of our defense, really. Uh, at the end of the day, the way he is in the locker room, the way that he practices, the way that he carries himself, uh, absolute student of the game, you know, wants to be right, um, you know, has, has really cleaned up some of those things as far as understanding, truly understanding the scheme uh, and not having the mental errors and different things like that. So uh, really love where he is in the progression. Again, he's another young football player that has been highly productive for us, but still has a lot of football left to play, not only this season, but in the future here for the Howard Bison. Thanks, Coach. Ty Miller. Hey, good morning, Coach. Ty Miller with the Power News Radio Network. How you doing? Ty, how you doing? Good I'm good, Coach. Um, you mentioned those uh, bye weeks. So how have those staggered bye weeks, you know, play a game, have a bye week, play another game, have a bye week, 
How have they affected your team? Uh, you know, we've tried to not let it affect our team. You know, there, there's so many different things you have to get done uh, here. It, it gave us some, some buffer time right before midterms to handle some things academically, uh, which lays a lot of pressure and stress on our young men here in the program because it's so academically driven. Um, obviously, uh, it's, it, it's, you know, it's really important that we perform well in the classroom here. So um, to have that time so they can spend a little bit of time with that. Uh, we've had some guys, you know, that have, were nursing some bumps and bruises and different things like that to kind of get healthy. Uh, but, you know, when you start to try to get going as a football team and as a football program that on again, stop again, on again, stop again. The only thing I could have related to was 2020 when we were trying to, you know, train and do things amongst COVID, COVID and COVID stops and this thing. And so it was kind of an ear reminder uh, of a little bit of that. Uh, but we found a silver lining in that. And we attacked the things that we needed to attack to get better. We got healthy. We took care of ourselves academically. Uh, and, and really, as coaches, it kind of gave us a chance to, to you know, take a deep breath, uh, kind of be in the moment that we were in as far as what we needed to do to win the game that was coming, but also start looking into the future a little bit uh, about some things and, and what we needed to do as a, a football program from a coaching side of things uh, to ensure that we're in the best position possible uh, to be as competitive in these games we had coming. So, you know, we got to find a silver lining in it. Okay, Coach, uh, on the field, um, what has happened in these past games that will help you in conference play, being that's your first conference matchup this weekend? Oh, man, I think just, you know, we haven't been, you know, a heavy penalized team. Um, we've we've uh, been, you know, decent on, you know, on third down against some really good teams and programs, where, you know, so uh, the execution, like even you go back to the Harvard game, um, we, we actually had too, too many drives in that game, and one of them was led by a third-team quarterback to go in and be able to execute, you know, in two-minute situations in those type of games. So um, to see all the very looks and fronts and coverages, different things that we've seen, uh, it, it kind of has prepared you to say, hey, we've seen it all. Um, we got answers for it. We've seen it. Uh, you guys are confident. We've executed amongst all of it. Uh, at a high level, even in some of those games where, I mean, you know, we've, we've always been picked to be beaten by 20, by 30, by whatever the case may be. And, and nobody's lined up and, and, and flat just did that to us because our guys got a little bit more pride in that. Uh, they play hard. They're going to play to the finish. So I think, you know, every one of these situations from the swag to the Ivy to everything, uh, we've kind of seen it a little bit of it all. Uh, it's prepared us for what we're getting ready to embark on, and we're excited to get going. And one last question, Coach. Uh, we know Dell State's tough and gritty. What sticks out about that seven-point loss to the Hornets last season? Uh, you know, it's kind of been that way. We played each other kind of in some some scrimmage games uh, back in the COVID spring season. Uh, and it's kind of been that. It's been a tight deal all the way, both, you know, both teams. And it really come down to field position, uh, special teams play, and a team that made, the, you know, the least amount of mistakes uh, were the ones, that, you know, that, you know, came out on top. I think both games have been, you know, very, very tight. Well, all, all the games have been very tight down to the end, uh, kind of onside kick down to the end type situation uh, for uh, both times. So uh, we know what it is. We know it's going to be a four-quarter ball game, and we know they're coming in here to, to, to take the spoils. They just did it uh, on the road last week. Um, uh, and, and I know that they're going to come in here, and Coach is going to have them ready to play and do the same thing here at, at, you know, in D.C. on Saturday. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot, and good luck this weekend. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mia Berry. Hi, Coach. How are you? I'm doing well, Mia. How are you? I'm doing very well. Just a quick question. So this will be probably the first homecoming in the last couple of years without stringent COVID restrictions. Can you talk a little bit about what atmosphere are you expecting, given no restrictions this year, and to have Howard's full base of fans and alumni able to attend? Uh, it's been something you've been feeling around here for almost two weeks, uh, the build up to it uh, and how excited the uh, the fans, the alumni, uh, the students and everybody is uh, about that. So much so that, you know, we've had students come you know, on the bus ride up to New York City for our game up in New York against Morehouse. Uh, and, you know, the build up of, you know, we, didn't, we played in, you know, in D.C. It wasn't here at home, but to have the students come over on the buses over to um you know, to Audi Field to watch us play. So uh, there's been a true buzz and build up probably over the last two weeks uh, that everybody's excited about, you know, this 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 environment about homecoming. Uh, again, like you just said, it's, it's been the first one since probably 2019, well, since 2019, uh, unrestricted, um, full avail to what they're used to and accustomed to having here. I haven't seen, seen that or experienced uh, what that is either in, in my time here. 
uh, because it all has been, you know, amongst COVID and, and coming out of that. So uh, truly excited about that. But, you know, we, we got a football game to play. Uh, and in the end, you know, that's that's the biggest challenge for us this week is to stay focused and uh, and then be about the work that we got to get done in our preparation to uh, play the football game and win the game. And then after you do that, then you can enjoy and partake in all of the festivities that is homecoming. Uh, but for right now, uh, you know, we refer to it as we're going to go all climbing the submarine and we're going to go about 20 feet, you know, you know, deep under the ocean and, and we're going to go to work. We're going to be in the lab and we're going to take care of the business we need to take care of so that they can enjoy or, you know, attempt to enjoy uh, what homecoming means for them. So everybody's excited, really, truly excited. Thank you, Coach. That's all I had. All right, Coach Scott, thank you for your time today. I hope you have a good week and happy homecoming. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate you guys. See you next week. Take care. The Bison finally get to play in Green Stadium as they welcome the Delaware State Hornets for homecoming on Saturday. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. and the game will be seen live on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Up next, we have head coach from North Carolina Central, Trey Oliver. Good morning, Coach Oliver. How are you? I'm well, Karen. How are you doing this morning? Doing well. Good to see you. All right, Coach, can you give us an opening statement about Thursday's game against Morgan State? Yes, we had the conference opener here Thursday night against Morgan. Um, the crowd, fans showed up. We had a great, great atmosphere. Uh, the good Lord kept the rain off of us uh, throughout the game. But uh, it, it was, I thought we played well. Um, uh, offensively, you know, we converted on, on a lot of third downs and, and possessed the football for a lot of the first half. Uh, defensively, um, I thought for the most part we played well over there. We did have a miscommunication early on their first series and, and gave up a score. Um, and then kicking game, uncharacteristically, we gave up a, a kickoff return or a touchdown. So I was a little, a little disheartened by that. But for the most part, obviously, I thought we played well overall. All right, Coach, and then you travel to Orangeburg, South Carolina on Saturday to take on the South Carolina State Bulldogs. What can we expect from your Eagles? Here we go. <laughs> Buddy Pew. Uh, yeah, we got to go down here and see uh, these Bulldogs. And um, it's going to be a physical, physical football game. And, you know, they are who they are. They're going to run the football. Uh, they're going to keep a great running back. And... Um, they always going to have one great defensive lineman and, and a stable full of uh, linebackers. So um, they are who they are. Same team they've been for the last probably 20 years. Uh, but this is going to be a championship caliber game. And, and we're looking forward to it. But uh, we, we've got to bring our A game. All right, Coach, those are my questions. We'll now turn to the media, beginning with Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta. Dr. Cavill's inside the HBC Sports Lab. Good morning, Coach Oliver. Good morning, Doc. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing well. You got me excited, focused. Uh, I know you're looking forward, but I'd be remiss if I didn't at least ask one question in regards to the last week's game. So if you'd allow me to take you back just a little bit. In terms of your efficiency in that overall game, uh, scoring on the first five drives, uh, six out of the seven first drives. Um, in terms of that efficiency level of having that week off, how good is it? to have your team have that level of focus, particularly when you are about to go into a game the following week that uh, has a lot on the line. Right. We definitely need that week off. And, and I, we preached about technique and fundamentals. And I thought the guys uh, um, took advantage of that week and, and excelled in those areas. Uh, in pregame, it was a little different mood out on the field, a little different uh, feeling out mm. there. And I, I didn't know if the guys were flat or what. And um, I was a little concerned. Uh, they just had a little different look in their eye, and, and it was just different. And, I, you know, I think it was just a level of focus that I hadn't seen from them before, and, and they were excited and ready to go. Um, but then as far as uh, how efficient we are, again, we have, you know, we have role players, and everybody understands their role. We don't have that star mm -hmm. power where we have that LeBron or we have that Kobe. You know, we, we do have Pee Wee. Now, he's pretty daggum good. But, uh, you know, we have guys that make plays when their numbers are called, whether it's Andrew Smith, Devin Smith, uh, EJ Hicks, uh, Mookie Collier, Jamari Taylor, you know, the list goes on. And guys just show up and play, and, and they play on well right now. Moving forward, put that behind us. I know the focus is on this game for a lot of reasons. And uh, for fans and those of uh, the MEAC and HBCU in general, there's reasons to be excited about this particular matchup. 
So with all those different parts of the puzzle, both offensively and defensively, what do you, are you focusing on this week with your team to be prepared to hit the road for a physical contest? It, it hasn't changed. We just got to get better. And, and we talked about stacking practices, stacking days, uh, and stacking weeks. And if we can play a little bit better this week coming up than we did last week, I like our chances. Uh, but we, we can't get stagnant and, and um, not improve. We've got to get better every week in every facet of the, of the program. Thank you, Coach Oliver. Look forward to this matchup. Thank you. James Hill. Good morning, Coach. How are you, sir? I'm good. Good morning, James. I'm well. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, just talk a little bit about your Eagles football team. You guys are a strong football team, and each week you get better. Yeah, we have a great group. And I mean, the support staff and everybody that touches the program is bought in and, um, you know, everybody's working to improve. Uh, I can't say enough, enough about the support staff. For example, Thomas Carroll, my strength and conditioning coach and uh, Bulldog, those guys help push the character and the culture of our team. And, and they get the guys mentally focused to go to practice. And once we practice, uh, we talk about improving. You know, sometimes guys can get caught up in just period by period and just trying to survive practice. We talk about going out and attacking each period. Don't go out there in survival mode. Let's work to get better. So um, everybody in the program, even my video guy, Chris, he's done a little bit better job filming practice and games. So everybody counts. Everybody matters. Coach, each week it intensifies. It's always intense. But uh, now you'll go into a hostile environment, and they have some of the things your program wants. Just talk a little bit about a golden opportunity. And this might be the game of the year. Yeah, and I have you right. They have what we want. And, and I mean, they got a whole lot of championships up there on their stadium. And I have the utmost respect for uh, South Carolina State um, and Buddy Pugh and what they've done down there. Uh, that's a great championship caliber football program. Uh, they've had many legends come through there from Willie Jeffries, uh, Ben Black, and along, you know, through all the players. Uh, so, you know, that's a championship team. I've got the utmost respect for them and what they've been able to accomplish. Uh, I was really excited to see how they represented our conference last year in the Celebration Bowl. Um, but we, we, we're excited also about being able to go down here and, 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 uh, and, and lock it up with these guys. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Foreman? Skip Foreman of HBCU Game Day. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Skip. Uh, you've had extended periods to prepare in your last two games. I don't know what you did Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but do those extra days help in getting ready to play South Carolina State? Did you do anything that, to, to, to get yourselves ready? Uh, Friday, we, we uh, were, watched film, made some corrections. The, the rest of the staff was out on the road uh, recruiting. So it was just three coaches here in the office. Uh, we gave the guys uh, Saturday off, and then we had a full practice yesterday. Uh, the guys will have off tomorrow, and we'll get back after it on Tuesday. So whenever you get a, you know, a day or so off, yes, definitely helps get your legs back underneath you and, and kind of clear your mind a little bit. Um, but, you know, we, we was well needed last week. And you, you mentioned earlier about the tradition and all the – the trappings of being at South Carolina State and their their history with football. Central doesn't lack for its own. So you you sort of have similar backgrounds. What is going to set you apart from them this coming Saturday? What what are some of the other things you need to do? We know you have Davius, but who else is going to have to step up for you? Shoot, everybody gets on that bus. All 115 people that go to Orangeburg are going to have to bring their A game. Everybody. And, you know, it's going to be physical. It's going to start up in the trenches, and uh, they're going to try to run the football on us. And, you know, obviously we're going to try to run the football on them as well. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a whole lot of uh, scheming and, and, and secrets that's going to be going on. They know where we're going to be, and we know where they're going to be. It's all about enforcing your will on somebody. Um, but, you know, we have to continue to be efficient offensively. And, um, you know, we talked about being consistent around here. And, and our highs can't be too high and our lows can't be too low. We kind of have to play consistent football. Last question. They 
also have ridden on a roller coaster that I think they're two and four now, but are looks deceiving here? Do, do you, do you let the record sort of guide you or is it just the fact that it's South Carolina state that has you? That's concerned? South Carolina state, man. I don't even know. I didn't even know what their record was. So I don't know. I know they won a championship last year and that's South Carolina state. So, um, who they played what uh UCF and South Carolina I believe it was so you know two of those losses were against you know division one uh programs but they played a tough schedule they played Florida A&M and uh uh North Carolina A&T as well so they've, they've had you know a tough schedule coming in uh but you can throw all them records out the door I think this is you know the one and two place ranked team from last year uh going heads up again this year so uh you can throw all out the door I appreciate it coach good luck this week Thank you. Nate Henry, Jr. Good morning, Coach. How you doing? I'm well, Nate. How you doing this morning? Good, good. Um, I, I just have one question. Coming off a big win like uh, against Morgan State, what's the kids' mindset going into South Carolina State and how, how are they looking to um, prepare for this challenge? They locked in. We, we had a team meeting yesterday. They're focused. Uh, we didn't even talk about Morgan State. That's over and done with. Uh, mm -hmm. They they knew in the locker room as soon as that we saw the alma mater win the locker room after the Morgan game that we were done with that. They knew what, you know what was up and what the task at hand. So uh, they've been locked in. Um, I love our level of focus right now. I think our staff, the coaches, are doing a really good job of, of trying to come up with the game plan. Uh, but we'll 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 be ready. We'll be ready when uh, come Saturday afternoon. But good luck and uh, uh, moving forward uh, against South Carolina State. Thank you. Ty Miller. Hey, Coach Oliver. How you doing, man? I'm well, Ty. How you doing? I'm good. Uh, in, in your opening comments, when you mentioned Buddy Pugh, you lit up. Why? Because, I mean, if, if you know Buddy Pugh, man, he's a great person, great dude. Uh, quick Buddy Pugh story. We were at, in Norfolk for the coaches' uh, media day over the summer. And Buddy said, uh, Trey, how long have you been at Central now? Was, and I said, well, this is my fourth year, Coach. And he was like, man, I lost a lot of money off of you. I said, Coach, how you lose money off me? I bet somebody there's no way you'd make it over two years. <laughs> so, uh, but that's that's Buddy, man. And like, you know, the, the success he's had and, and he does things the right way. Um, you know, he's, he's out there in the community. He's all about uh, his university. And, you know, that's how I try to pattern myself. I'm not all over social media and all that stuff. Uh, if it's not going to benefit North Carolina Central University and my program, you know, it's not for me. But um, uh, I, I hope one day when, when I'm done and hang my shoes up and hang my whistle up that I could be looked at and revered as, as like Buddy Pugh. And with that in mind, Coach, I, I know the coach speak is one game at a time. We put no, no other game before any other. But is this the game that you have to have to win the MIAC? Yeah, well, I mean, it's only six teams in the conference, so you can't, you can't lose a game. And, um, you know, I, I think they're the best team in the conference right now. And it's our job to, to knock them off. So, uh, yes, this is a championship caliber game and not looking ahead, you know, or, or at any other school. But we have to handle our business this weekend to have a, a chance to be in a conversation about a championship uh, come November. And lastly, Coach, uh, give us your thoughts on Corey Fields and Shaquan Davis. <laughs> All right. Um, they, they, offensively, they can play, man. Those, those guys can go. Uh, Shaq Davis, I mean, he's the most dominant player in the conference. And, and I mean, he, he's got the size, he's got the speed, he's got the body control, uh, very strong hands. Uh, you know, I, I don't even want to watch the South Carolina game anymore because, you know, he gave those guys the business. Um, and, you know, they, he's, he's just a, a different a man amongst boys. So we're going to have to figure out a way to shut him down. And if we can shut him down, I like our chances. And Corey? Fields? Phil, yes. Yes. Uh, well, they got a two-headed monster back there uh, with him and the Knicks kids. So uh, we have to have a plan for a running quarterback and, 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 a, and a passing quarterback. Uh, he hasn't been a, quite as accurate as he was last year. Um, but, you know, they, they have some threats. And, and again, it's going to start with us stopping the run. All right. Thank you, Coach. Yeah, thank you. Mia Berry. Hi, Coach Oliver. How are you today? I'm well, Mia. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing very well. Just two quick questions for you. So last season, 
you played South Carolina State, only ended up a three-point game, three-point loss on your end. How fresh is that in your guys' memory? And what are some lessons that you rolled back and looked at last year's game that you're kind of hoping to improve upon this year? Yeah. Uh, first of all, we lost the kicking game. We missed two field goals and an extra point. So we left seven points out there. Um, I thought that they were more physical than us last year. And um, so it is very fresh. And, and you know, when you lose one game like that in the conference, that keeps you out of a the celebration bowl. That, you know, that hurts. Uh, so we will definitely come in this year uh, more prepared. I think our guys are, are a lot more focused than we, at this time than we were last year. And uh, like always, we can't come in trying to uh, match their intensity. When we go there in their house, we have to make them play to our level. Okay, Coach, thank you. That's all I have. Have a blessed rest of today. Thank you. You too. All right, Coach Oliver, those are all our, those are all our questions for you. Uh, have a good week and good luck on Saturday. All right, Karen. Thank you. Have a good day. Take care of you too. The Eagles take on the South Carolina State Bulldogs at 1.30 p.m. on Saturday, and the game can be seen live on ESPN3. Up next, we have with us Delaware State head coach, Coach Rod Milstead. Good morning, Coach. How are you? Good morning, Karen. How are you? Doing well. All right, Coach, can you give us a recap of Saturday's game against Norfolk State? Uh, Saturday's game against Norfolk, we knew going down there. It was homecoming. Uh, a lot of festivities, a lot of alumni. It's going to be a big crowd. So we prepared for that all week long. Uh, kind of uh, the bye week helped us out uh, getting some guys healed and uh, getting some guys uh, prepared to, to play. So it um, was a good day for us. Uh, offensively, came out and scored on the, the third play of the game, which is always a bonus when the plan comes together. And uh, uh, from that point on, just uh, continually – uh, was able to move the ball. I was very pleased uh, with our offensive production. Our defense uh, showed up uh, like they always do. Uh, Coach Kramer has those guys running on, uh, on I always say, turbo boost uh, for the way they play and uh, the way they've come together and just trying to even make a, a, def a good defense even better. Uh, so uh, made it difficult for Norfolk to, to, to score. I think they scored in the fourth uh, middle of the fourth quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, uh, uh, they scored. We had uh, switched in some guys, uh, gave some uh, guys who hadn't had an opportunity to play, probably put them in a little bit too soon. But uh, uh, they were able to score uh, on us that way. Special teams uh, was big. Uh, 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 Nate Wilson, our kicker, uh, placed the ball exactly where we wanted him to place it. And uh, I had a couple wrinkles uh, in our punting game. But all in all, it was a good day for us. Um, uh, Norfolk is, is a better football team than, than people give them credit for. They have a lot of good players, good coaches as well. We were very, very fortunate uh, to walk away uh, with the margin of victory the way it was. All right, Coach. And two homecomings in a row that you'll be a part of. You travel to Howard this weekend. What can we expect from the Hornets? Well, Howard is a little different, a little different animal. Okay, we've... Uh, We've had some success against them in the past, but like I told my, our players, man, every game is a different game. Um, and uh, it's a new season, uh, new people. Um, Howard is a, is a much better uh, uh, football team than they were a year ago. Um, and uh, I, I know Coach Scott is going to have those guys uh, prepared to play. Uh, was unaware that uh, they hadn't played uh, in their home stadium. Uh, so that's news to me. So that's another uh, I guess, bullet in their gun as well that they're going to have that's going to be special for them. And then, you know, their homecoming. Homecoming is always special. Uh, you know, I remember playing the MEAC. It's a, it's a different vibe that you have. You don't, you don't want to let your, your alumni down. You don't want to uh, uh, not perform on homecoming. That's one of the games that you kind of mark on your calendar. And that's the game that everyone talks about. So uh, we know we're going to be that uninvited, that unwanted guest. Uh, but we – we know we have a task at hand, and it's it's not about spoiling the football. Not about spoiling a homecoming for us. Uh, it's about winning a football game, and that's the way we're going to block out all the the festivities. I'm quite sure they're going to have a million stars on the sidelines like they always do. That's just that's Howard University. Uh, but uh, uh, we're we're going to come play a football game, and we will be prepared uh, to do that. Awesome, coach. Good luck on Saturday. 
I will turn to the media now for questions, beginning with Dr. Cavill. Good morning, Coach Milster. Good morning, Dr. Cavill. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Um, watched the game. Got a chance to dig into it. Uh, great performance, particularly how you were able to be balanced, but rushed the ball for 200 yards offensively. Tell me a little bit more about Marquise, the sophomore. He's a significant size, back, six feet, 200 pounds. Obviously had a breakout game in a lot of ways, 123 yards, got in the end zone on just 16 carries, 7.7 uh, yards. So he was significant in terms of being able to help the offense move that ball. Well, I think the hardest part was last year, Dr. Cavell, uh, trying to keep him a secret, you know, only allowed him <laughs> playing, playing four games, you know, trying to really build this program. And uh, we knew we had him in the arsenal. And uh, we had a back last year that was very, very successful for us. Uh, we were hoping to have a one-two punch uh, to really dominate the running game in the MEAC and, and also FCS. But one guy decided to, to leave, and, and that's that was his choice. And, uh, you know, he opened the door uh, uh, for Marquise Gillis, who was a, a, a phenomenal back. Uh, he's a redshirt freshman, so the MEAC's going to see him for the next, you know, three years. Uh, and, and he's pretty darn special. Um, but it's not just Marquise, because Marquise can't do it by himself. It's that offensive line up front. You know, for some reason, the whispers are they play like their old head, like their head coach. But I haven't seen that part yet. Uh, well, that, that's yes, <laughs> that, that's well, that, that's yet to be seen. But uh, they 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 really played well on uh, on on Saturday. Um, I was really pleased uh, finally to get our the our starters back. Uh, we had some injuries, of course, and, and all those guys came back, and uh, they 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 really did a really good job of opening some holes and giving him a chance to to be successful. Um, but uh, he's a pretty special back, and we're very, very fortunate to have him. Man, it's good to hear that they have their height set that high in regards to their goals uh, on the football field. Uh, uh, with that being said, let's move into this Howard matchup. And they're, they're pretty nice in terms of defensive front, what they're able to do. So I'm really intrigued about the trenches because we know that you're going to continue to want to uh, play significant ball up front, get the edge, get the push. Be able to go through the tackles and make some plays and control the tempo of the game. Can you talk about for us? Um, obviously, the sexy part of it oftentimes are the wide receivers, quarterbacks, running backs, as I just kind of alluded to. But I want to give some love to those folks in the trenches and why we should keep our eyes on that matchup in this particular game uh, against Howard. Well, uh, this, I mean, it's we have a young, I want to say a young but seasoned offensive line. We have two seniors and uh, everyone else are redshirt freshmen. So um, it, uh, you got the leadership of, of a Dylan Marshall, who is the center. Uh, uh, and, and then you have uh, the, the youthfulness of a Dorico Potson, who's the left guard and Isaiah uh, uh, Cook, who's the right guard and uh, Dia Dua, who is our, our right tackle. Uh, and then you got the, uh, I call him the old man of the group and that's Sam Pearson. Uh, he's from D.C., so of course, this is a, a excited. Uh, he's really excited to come back home and and, and play uh, in, in front of his, uh, his his hometown and also his friends and family. And Dylan Marshall's from the DMV as well. Uh, he's from Waldorf, so um, it, it's going to be very very fun up front. And uh, uh, when those guys get it rolling, man, they, they make it very very difficult. But they you know that we had a good week of practice, and this is something that uh, I did yesterday. I just took our practice cut-ups and put it with our game cut-ups and I showed our team how it matches up. Mm. You know, you're going to play the way you practice. If you practice, you know, like some trash, you're going to play like some trash. And, you know, our offense earlier uh, this year uh, didn't really have the best of practices. And that's something that I saw. Uh, so I really challenged our offensive coaches uh, to let's make some, uh, uh, some, some wholesale changes uh, and get the ball to a lot of mm. people. I think nine different people touched the football. Uh, on, on Saturday, uh, we wanted to balance the tag. I was disappointed uh, that we didn't get, didn't get 400 yards uh, of total offense. We got 398, but I wanted it to, to be, you know, uh, around 200 passing, 200 uh, uh, rushing. And, and that's when you know you're having good offensive pr productivity. And, and if you look back at our, at our previous Absolutely. game, we really hadn't had that. Um, and, and so I, I wanted us to be more balanced on offense to support our defense. We've asked them to do a lot the last few years, a lot. And now it's time for offense 
to really pick up. And, and they stepped up to the challenge. And uh, I, I got to tell people, it's going to be a different offensive uh, offensive uh, uh, production uh, from the Delaware State Hornets going forward. These guys are, are focused and, and looking forward to this matchup this weekend. No doubt. I appreciate it, Coach. Look forward to it. Thank you. Thanks for watching. James Hill. Hey, Coach, I hope you and everyone in Dover are well. Can you talk a little – congratulations on that victory. Can you talk about the defensive side of the football uh, as you played the Spartans? Uh, our, it all starts up front with Isaiah, uh, uh, Isaiah Williams, uh, first team all-conference. Uh, the, 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 the kid, I, I got to speak on him because he's, he's pretty darn special. Uh, the kid decided that he was uh, going to uh, change the makeup of his body. So he went vegan, cut a bunch of weight. Uh, I mean, looks like a Greek guy without a shirt on and uh, just, um, just decided that uh, this off season, instead of being here uh, with the team in summer access, that he was going to stay out in Indianapolis with his brother who plays with the Colts. He's a defensive lineman with the Colts. And he trained with those guys all summer long. And uh, when he came back, uh, he would have sessions with the D-line uh, outside of practice and teaching them the techniques that he learned out with his brother and the NFL guys. And as we've seen now, it really, really paid, pays dividends because everyone's using those techniques. Uh, it's kind of funny because I watch those guys and I'm, and I'm saying, man, thank God I didn't play against them when I was at Delaware State because you know, they're, they're doing stuff that I see in the pros. Uh, uh, but that cohesive group, I mean, we play seven, eight, nine defensive linemen per game, you know, and uh, same thing at, at the at the linebacking core uh, where we play, you know, five and six different linebackers and then defensive backs. We definitely play, you know, uh, probably seven or eight different, different defensive backs per game. Everyone gets an opportunity to play. So here at Delaware State, we don't have any backups. You know, if you're not on the field, then you're a starter waiting to play. And uh, we've adopted that 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 mantra also on our offensive side, because as the weeks have passed, you know, we had different offensive line. This is the first time we had this offensive line back together. You know, this was the offensive line we had in week two. Uh, we haven't had them. So we were excited uh, to get everybody back. They're healthy. Uh, they're looking good. Uh, but I just told them that was just one game, you know. Uh, we, we have, uh, we have six teams in the MEAC and in order to have a say, okay, you got to win every week. Okay. Uh, coach Oliver just mentioned that, uh, one loss, somebody else is, uh, uh, kind of telling you, uh, if you'll have a shot to, to win the MEAC. Okay. If you continue to win like South Carolina state did last year and they ran the table, they had to say, of, of where they were going to go at the end. And that's something I think everyone right now is fighting for, is to have that say and that uh, of, of, of having that opportunity to, to get to Atlanta. But that's the big picture. Um, all we're focused on right now is Howard University, and I know Coach Scott is going to have uh, of those guys ready to play. Coach, you just alluded to it, the opportunity to build up a football team, go out and win games, and work towards a league title. Can you just talk about the position you guys are in? Because you're, you're in great shape in terms of moving forward, but you, as you said, you have to go out and do the work. Well, I just want to first thank the Delaware State Administration um, uh, for, for what they've done um, and, and, and believing in, in my process, okay? If you ever see some of my things on Twitter, it always says, trust the process. Uh, the process is the work. And, uh, uh, you know, this was a vision of mine uh, five years ago of how this process would work. And I knew it wouldn't be an overnight fix. I knew uh, we didn't have the resources to turn this thing around overnight. Um, and, and so it was going to take some time to build it. It was going to start through recruiting, getting the right kids that fit the Delaware State uh, a mindset, uh, having them believe into the vision and then promoting the, uh, the program through the process. And these guys have, have done it. They, if you walk up to any Delaware State football player and you ask them, you know, how you doing? Nine times out of 10, he's going to say, glad to be here, okay? Because he had opportunities to go any place in the country, but he chose Delaware State. That's the process. First, you got to love where you are. The second thing you got to do is you got to make a commitment and be dedicated to that commitment and see it through till the end. And these guys that are here with me now, we got senior leadership. 
Uh, we got guys that understand that winning is not something uh, uh, that's going to be given to you. It's got to be earned. And it's got to be earned every day in practice, which is part of the process. So we're still in the process. and We're still going through the process. Uh, but uh, our guys believe into it, and we're looking forward uh, to this big matchup in the nation's capital. I get a chance to, to go back home and, and, uh, and, and coach in front of the hometown uh, crowd, so I'm excited about that as well. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed week. Thank you. Daryl Duvall. Hey, Coach, I just want to say congratulations on the win. This is Daryl Duvall with Power U Media. Coach, I just want – you alluded to one of your players – uh, actually leaving and and going to practice with his with his brother, and I mean in the beginning, how did you feel about that and not really practicing at the school? Well, well, and being in the end goal. Of well, the thing is, is that uh, uh, and not everybody can do that, okay? But uh, he graduated, and uh, you know, at that particular time, he could have really said, you know, coach, I'm gonna take my talent someplace else. But he said, Coach, I want to go out here because I want to make the team better. And uh, when, when, when a kid tells you that, um, you, sometimes you gotta, you got to jump on that bandwagon and say, you know what? Uh, I totally agree. Go learn those concepts. Go learn uh, those different techniques and bring them back. And so he made a lot of videos while he was out there. And he was shooting the videos back to his teammates, actually watching him work and explaining the techniques as he was getting taught the techniques himself. So for us – it's been phenomenal. I, I hope and pray next year he takes the whole whole D line out there. I'll be I'll be ecstatic if he does that as well. But that's just one of the perks of having your brother play professional football. You know what I mean? So if you can get it while you're in college, then get it. I mean, I, I guess you know you could say the same thing about my offensive line. They got a head coach who played professional football. I'm giving it to them. Everything that I learned, they're getting it. So uh, it's it's starting it's starting to pay dividends for us, and we're excited. Um, uh, that, that he can do those type of things, but uh, he's just a different guy. That's why the scouts are in here, you know, on a weekly basis looking at him. He's he's a different cat, and uh, he keeps this up. Uh, hopefully, he'll get an opportunity to be playing on Sundays. Coach, uh, again, congratulations on the win. I, I you probably would say, I wish all my players were like that to take that initiative on. And like you said, only certain ones you probably would allow to do something like that, but uh. And that's a unique knowledge, having your brother actually play ball and you learn it from it and then sending that information back to the players. Absolutely. But good luck for next week. And also, I mean, the game is coming up on North Carolina Central, so I'll be watching that game. So uh, we'll be talking next week about that for that uh, pregame coming up. The only thing in the crosshairs right now is how. <laughs> I'm All telling right. you that right now. That's the only thing we're thinking about. You know, we've, we, we've tried that game before, and that game didn't work well for Dell State. So – I've told my kids, man, we're, hey, it's one step at a time. You know, every day, every day that we go to practice, we're one day closer. And that's what we're thinking about right now. It's just Howard. All right. Well, good luck. Uh, Thank coach. you. Have a good day. You too. Nate Henry Jr. Good morning, Coach. Good morning, Mr. Henry. How are you? Good. Good to see you again. Um, congratulations on the win this weekend. Um, over the years, Howard the Dell State has had some memorable games. What are your what are your major concerns as you prepare for them? Um, everything's concerned when it comes to Howard. Uh, it used to be one of the biggest rivalries. Uh, there was a guy named Harvey Reed that uh, that played at, at Howard when I was here at, at Delaware State, and uh, uh, back in '87, I remember Harvey Reed right and Harvey Reed left. Uh, on options and we couldn't stop them. Uh, and, and that's when I got introduced to this rivalry. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy because, you know, I wanted to be a Howard Bison. That's where I had uh, uh, wanted to go. And Coach Jeffries offered me a scholarship. But my parents decided it was that I needed to get out of the city. You know, that, you know, you grew up in the D.C. area. You know what that's all about. You need to go see something different. And although I was very reluctant, uh, in the beginning, uh, it was the best decision that my mom made for me uh, was to come to Delaware State. And, and uh, 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 Coach Scott has those guys getting better every week. Uh, and and uh, I know um, all the intangibles that is going to be a, a around the festival style of a Howard homecoming um, is it, going to be something that's going to open up my guys' eyes. They're going to want to see, especially the ones 
who have never seen it before. Uh, I'm very fortunate. I've been to a Howard homecoming when I, when I wasn't a player. And so I, I know what it looks like. Uh, uh, and, and I'm explaining to them what it is, but you know, it's another football game for us. You know, the, the homecoming is for their, it's, it's for their fans. It, it's not for the visiting team. We're supposed to be the bait. Okay. Um, but uh, uh, we're, we're coming in, like I said, to win a football game. Uh, this Ain't gonna be a it ain't gonna be a bait a bait situation on Saturday. We're coming to play four quarters of, of, of football, and uh, you know our, our goal is to win the football game, and and they can celebrate however they want to celebrate uh, uh, with their homecoming, like they should. But uh, for us, the rivalry uh, is uh, it hasn't lost its luster. It's still there. I mean, we're only uh, a short bus ride away, and, and we'll be getting there early that morning. We're not coming the day before. Uh, uh, we'll get there early that morning and be prepared to get on the field and, and uh, put on a good performance come Saturday. Thank you. The yard, HBCU Sports. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm glad to be here. How are you? I'm doing all right, Coach. This is Dwayne Nash from the Yard, HBCU Sports. You kind of touched on the first question I had for you about you being a D.C. native, having connections here in the area, playing in the MEAC, coaching in the MEAC. You most definitely, well, I was going to ask, how much experience do you have um, participating and in, in coaching at Howard's homecoming? And how do you prep your players for that? But you kind of touched on it a little bit already. Um, my, my backup question is going to be um, your feelings on playing in back-to-back -back homecomings. I know there's some coaches out there that have issues with being scheduled for homecomings. What are your thoughts on it? Man, I don't have an issue. I'm going to be honest with you. I feel honored. You know what I mean? You know, think about it. How many, how many females you know when a young man asks them to prom that they feel disrespected? I don't feel disrespected. I think it's an honor. Thank you. I, I appreciate them for, for skills and us for homecoming. That that really doesn't mean anything. It's on the schedule. We knew it was coming up. You know, it's 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 not like it surprised us last week. Uh, uh, so you know, we're looking forward to it. Um, Norfolk, we knew we were on their schedule as well, and we had a good day. You know, we're hoping to have a good day. Uh, against Howard as well. So uh, it, all the homecoming, that hoopla really doesn't mean anything to us. We got to put the ball down and we got to play the entire four quarters. And that's what I'm looking forward to. It. How well can we perfect offensively for four quarters, defensively and special teams? You know, and, and, and if we continue to improve off of where we left off last week, we should have success on Saturday. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. All right. I'm aware. Good morning, Coach Milstead. How you doing? Man, I'm glad to be here, Mr. Ware. How are you? Pretty good. You know, I was a youngin', but I was at the Harvey Reed left and Harvey Reed right game. Why are you bringing that up? Why are you mad? That is so irrelevant right now. <laughs> Just saying, I would say I was youngin', but I was in I was in the house. Uh, but for you now being four and two, what what sort of the difference with the program? maybe compared to last year or your previous couple of years there, that you've had this great start now, 1-0 and in conference. Well, the thing is, is that like you heard me allude to it earlier. We just want to uh, continue to, to, to stay on the plan and, and trust in the process, meaning we want to take a step every day and get better. Uh, with this group of guys, they're different. They're different. This is the group that I've been praying for, that we've been working for, to getting each man uh, uh, to do his job on every play, every practice, in the classroom, in the community. You know, we want all American citizens. We want not only all American football players, but we want the, the well-rounded guys. And that's what we recruited. You know, we recruited guys that fit our program model. And uh, now we're starting to starting to get uh, some of um, the returns off the investments that we've made two and three years ago when we had hard times. And uh, uh, I'm looking forward to it. Guys are really stepping out of their shells now. Uh, they're making their position their own. Everybody is thirsty uh, to get on the field. I mean, you, you got guys fighting uh, for playing time uh, on the sideline about who's next, who's going in next. And that's a good thing uh, to, to, to have, that guys are fighting uh, uh, on the sideline or, or arguing, hey, man, last series you had, it's my series this time right here. So, And that's even in practice. We've made our practices very, very competitive. So um, uh, 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 that competitive nature would, would, would continue on, you know, on Saturdays. Uh, and that's the one thing different that we've done 
uh, this year than in the past. Being four and two means nothing. That thing could quickly go sideways uh, fast. Uh, you guys have seen it every year. Teams start off hot, and then all of a sudden, you know, that, that tide changes. But, you know, we're very, very blessed, very fortunate. Uh, got two in a row. Uh, got one on the road, which we haven't been very consistent with uh, over the years. Uh, but like I said, it's a new Delaware State University football program. Uh, this is the program I've been waiting for, and this is the program that we've been building. So uh, we're excited, man. We're it's just it's a good time here at Delaware State. But the last game is over. We know each week it's its own Super Bowl, and we got to prepare to win it. Is, uh, as a follower, is, is this where you thought you may be? And again, it's still. I, I mean, I get it. It's still more seasons to play, but from when you came. Is this where you thought you would be by year four? Yes, yes, yes. We we are we are on 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 track. Uh, I think the only thing different. I was hoping that we'd be six and zero. Lost to Delaware and then we lost to Mary Mac. Um, uh, so I uh, when I when I built the schedule, I built the schedule to give us uh, a, a couple D two schools built in. Uh, I, I call them confidence builders uh, to give us. Uh, some time to pass some stats and then continue on a uh, good play because winning is contagious and so is that L word. Um, but uh, uh, four and two is, is, is a good place to be right now. Um, but like I said, you know, our goal is to be five and two and, and that's what we're seeking. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Last question from Jeremy Huber. Hey, Coach Milstead, Jeremy Huber from the Howard Broadcast team. Uh, what did C.J. Henry do well last week, and what's your quarterback status situation overall? Uh, C.J. Henry uh, played C.J. Henry football. He's a playmaker, okay? You look at him and say, hey, much to him. He's small. He's short. Uh, he's quick. He's fast. He got a lot of Kyler Murray's uh, ways to him, and if you had to measure to anybody, I would say he probably looks the size of Kyler Murray. Uh, has the athleticism uh, of, a, of a Kyler Murray. Uh, uh, just um, something about him that, that uh, it's kind of funny, but uh, one of my coaches here from Wilmington, Delaware, and I, I pulled him aside and I said, hey, what is wrong with CJ? Man, I just, I can't get a feel for him as a coach. That's just how he is. He's very laid back. He's not very vocal. Um, he's just, uh, a, a playmaker and, and that's what he does uh the the opportunities he's had this year i mean he's made plays and uh so right now uh he, he's the guy that we're going with um uh, jared has a uh, uh uh a strain uh in his side and uh, hopefully this week uh we'll find out today or tomorrow uh he's going to be able to go and then if if jared's able to go then jared be back in the starting rotation so um but if, if not then we're going to go with cj so uh, we're excited. Uh, we got some good feedback on Jared the other day. And uh, so um, the next 24 hours, 48 hours, we'll, we'll, we'll determine who's going to be our, our our starting quarterback, you know, uh, for this game against Howard. But it's Jared's going to be week to week until until we can, he can actually rest and, and, and get that strain under control. But CJ is a special uh, uh, playmaker for us, and um, uh, he has come a long way after redshirt and last year. He's also a redshirt freshman, so – uh, he's just making the most of his opportunity. He's out there having fun. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, Coach Milstead, those are the questions we have for you this week. Good luck this week, and see you next Monday. Thank you, Karen. Have a great day. You too. Take care. The Hornets travel to the nation's capital to take on Howard at 1 p.m. on Saturday. That game will be live on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Coach Odoms won't be able to make it today, but we will be joined by Norfolk State Defensive Coordinator Steve Adams. Good morning, Coach Adams. How are you? Oh, you're on mute. You're muted, Coach. Good morning, Ms. Cardi. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Good. Good to see you. All right, Coach, can you start us off with an opening statement about Saturday's game against Delaware State? Well, we, it was a beautiful day for football. We had a great homecoming crowd, a great environment. Uh, certainly didn't play the way we wanted to play and play up to our expectations, but hats off to Delaware State and Coach Milstead and, um, you know, their players. They, they played, their, played their hearts out, and, and they got the better of us. And, and so uh, 
you know, we're going into a much needed bye week and um, hopefully get healed up some and get guys back on the field and get guys ready to play. And we got two weeks to get ready for Howard. So um, we've got our challenge challenges in front of us, but, you know, we're, we're, we're working and, you know, we're, we're back at it. So. Awesome coaching. You mentioned the open week this week. Do you have any specific plans or things you'll be working on? Well, well, we'll practice throughout the week. We'll give the boys the weekend off. Um, certainly, we got to look at ourselves first and foremost and fix some of the problems that we've had uh, offensively, defensively in the kicking game um, and just start to slowly work on on Howard and, and get ready for them as well. So, you know, we're looking at all aspects of the game and, and trying to get ready. So. All right, uh, looking to see if we have any media questions for Coach Adams. Do we? James Hill, do I see your hand? Oh, okay. Mia had, Mia got in first. Uh, Mia Barry. Sorry, Mia. I was muted. Hi, Coach. How are okay. you? Good morning, Miss Barry. I'm great. Thank you. Good to see you. I just had two quick questions. You were a part of Coach Odom's staff at Southern, correct? Yes, ma'am. I was with him for four years at Southern. Um, I've known Coach for about 15 years now, so we go back for, for a good ways. Okay, this is perfect. My question for you, I know Coach Oliver, Trey Oliver, was a part of that staff back in the day. His stop at Southern was his first defensive coordinator position. Can you talk a little bit about that relationship there, and how does it feel seeing him and Central have such a good start? to the season? Oh, certainly. Uh, yeah, Coach Coach Oliver and I worked together for three years. Uh, he was the defensive coordinator. I was special teams coordinator. And Coach Corners for him for two years and and linebackers for him the last year. And, you know, we're, we're happy for him. And, and Coach Leone, their offensive coordinator, and I worked together as well. So we're happy, happy for them and wish them the best of luck. And, um, yeah, we, so we go, we go back as well. And we're just happy for him and wish him the best. Thank you, Coach. That's all I have for right now. James Hill. Hey, Coach Adams. I hope you and the guys are well. Can you just talk a little bit about this year's Spartans as opposed to last year's team? I know last year's behind us, but what you're seeing with these different football teams? Well, last year we had a, a offensive a group of seniors on offense that were certainly talented and, and uh, you know, were in that system for a number of years. And uh, Pootie Carter broke the school passing records and, and you know, we had a lot of good players there. Um, we had some really good players on, on defense as well, those defensive ends. And so our challenge has been getting the new guys in, getting our, our recruiting classes in. Um, and we didn't have that luxury because we got here in May. And so we were a year behind. I know Coach Odoms has talked about that, but getting guys to buy into to the process. And as Coach always says, chop wood and carry water and just not look at the results, but look at the process and look at every single day and every single practice and trying to do things the right way. Um, and, and we're playing a lot of young guys. We're playing freshmen and redshirt freshmen, and uh, they're still learning the game of football. They just got to develop physically in the weight room. They've got a uh, they've got a lot on their plates. And then learning time management as a college student athlete, uh, that, that's certainly a challenge as well. So we're getting there. Uh, we played a, a tough schedule to this point. I mean, we've lost six games, and and the six losses we've had. Four of them are four and two, and then James Madison's five and one, and certainly Marshall was three and three, but they beat Notre Dame. So we we've, we've had a had a lot of opportunities to learn, and and hopefully go into these this bye week and these last four weeks going into the end of the season, trying to make strides and take it one at a time. And we've only lost one conference game, so get our guys to buy into that and and play hard and see what we can get fixed and get the right guys on the field and the guys that are going to buy in and the guys that are going to get played that are going to play hard and get those guys on the field ready to play. Coach, talk a little bit about coaching this team up, continuing to put your stamp on this program and the fact that the team is way better than the record indicates. Well, our challenge has been to get the guys to play hard for 60 minutes and coach Odoms preaches to them 
you know, we can't complain about the results because every week we're guaranteed 60 minutes. And so, you know, again, going into the process, going into uh, just getting guys to buy in. And, and you know, we've, we've certainly we have some some leaders on both sides of the ball that are trying to get guys to do that. Um, and we're getting there. We're getting there and we're getting a lot of young guys those, that experience. So it's a challenge, you know, but but the guys come to practice every morning and, and we start early in the morning. Um, but the guys come out and practice with a good attitude and, and they haven't wavered from that. And so that's a, we commend them for practicing as hard as they do every single morning and still balancing class and study hall and the weight room and everything that goes on with the student athlete schedule despite a one in six start. And so we get some guys healthy this week. Uh, you know, hopefully we'll go into these last four games and uh, see some big improvements. Thank you, sir. Have a great week. You too. Thank you. All right. Final question from Mia. Hi, Coach. I know you kind of overlooked it a little bit. You guys are one and one in conference play. What's the message to the team, especially this bye week, that you guys are still in it? You can still reach that goal of winning the conference. Well, we just have to handle our business. And, you know, we told them when we were 0-5 going into the Morgan State game, we said, how do you take an 0-5 team and put them in first place? You win one game. And that's the, the – that's the attitude we have to have going into every single week that we play from here on out. And if we can finish four and one, uh, you know, and, and, you know, obviously Dell state controls, controls their destiny and everybody in this conference controls their, their own destiny. But, you know, we just have to take care of us and week by week, get them to buy into that philosophy and chop wood and carry water and, uh, don't focus on the results, just focus on the process and just focus on the day-to-day -day and let everything else take care of itself. Thank you, Coach. I appreciate that. My pleasure. All right, Coach Adams, thank you so much for filling in for Coach Odoms today. We really appreciate your time and good luck this open week. Thank you very much. Take care. Spartans are off this week. Up next, we have South Carolina State head coach, Buddy Pugh. Good morning, Coach Pugh. How are you? Good morning, Karen. How are you? I am doing well. All right, Coach, tell us a little bit about Saturday's game against Virginia Lynchburg. Well, we played Virginia Lynchburg Saturday. We had a big homecoming crowd, and we won a football game. Uh, we had an opportunity to play a lot of our uh, squad, a lot of our young guys, and you know, we came out of it, hopefully, with some confidence going into a big football game this week against uh, North Carolina Central. So our guys are all uh, jacked up and ready to go. Um, we've got a uh, few guys banged up, trying to get all those guys back healthy and ready to go. And tell you what, uh, Central really looks good. Uh, that's a top-notch football team, and I need to spank old uh, uh, Trey Oliver. He's up there trying to put a team together, trying to whoop us. I don't know if I can handle that deal or not, but <laughs> – <laughs> we'll be all right. We we get ready to play. Uh, it'll be a fun game. Uh, I, I'm really impressed with Central. Though. I think they got. I think those guys are really good. So we got our work cut out for us. I guarantee you. <laughs> all right, Coach. We'll get started with these media questions, beginning with James Hill. How you doing, Coach? Hey, James. How are you? I'm blessed. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Central? Um, Davius Richard, the quarterback, uh, uh, Collier, and also E.J. Hicks. Uh, these guys are, are playing very well. <laughs> you think? <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. The, the, their entire squad is uh, is playing well on both sides of the ball. Uh, Davis is probably the odds-on favorite right now for the top offensive guy in our league, and he's – Really honed in on his fundamentals, his skills. That way, he throws the ball extremely well. He 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 busted a seventy some odd yard run on us the first like second play of the game, I maybe last year, and you know showed his skills, his athleticism, his speed. You know that way, uh, we don't know exactly where to start, and uh, you know, in trying to stop these guys, Kaya uh, is is. Uh, 
you know, as strong on the receiving end of things as he is on the run game side. So Henny protects great. So all those guys, you know, seem to be, you know, developing into one of the this is the this is one of the better football teams I've seen in our league in quite some time. So we've all got our work cut out for us in these cats. Uh, y'all talking about who y'all gonna play. You know, we play South Carolina and uh UCF. I don't know if either one's any better than this team right here. We're gonna play this week. Coach, is this the game of the year? I know it's one game at a time, but and, and obviously the celebration bowl and that sort of thing. But when you look at this game, it's got everything that we love to see. Well, it's got everything except for you know, Central's opponent is not very good <laughs> right now. You know, we're having a little bit of a problem seeing, you know, the South Carolina State of old. We hadn't been quite the same outfit. And uh, we got to figure some things out to be, you know, somewhat in that category with these guys. These guys here, they souped up. They're good as all get out. And, uh, you know, we just kind of meet them right now. So this ain't quite the football team South Carolina State's had in the past. But, you know, we aspire to be that way. So we're going to see if we can get them ready to go in a week. We got our work cut out for us. Thank you, sir. Have a blessed week. Thanks a bunch, James. Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta with Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBC Sports Lab. Last time we talked last week, you talked about the, the need to get a win. That certainly happened this past weekend. Talk a little bit more about the psychology of, a, of the game, of a team, and the years that you've been involved in it, uh, how important is that and how, how much do you put on understanding your team in regards to just emotionally how they're feeling psychologically? Well, you know, I think it's huge. I think the fact that we had a chance to win a football game regardless, Virginia Lynchburg, you know, obviously is not very good. And, uh, you know, we've, uh, you know, kind of understood from the beginning that it was one of those games that we, that we should win. But, you know, that doesn't lessen the value of the win for us. We needed to win a football game to have some success. And now that we've gotten that done, you know, hopefully it gives us the excitement to prepare for another week of, you know, going into our league. Our league now becomes one step after the next. And, you know, anytime you, <laughs> anytime you drop one at this point, you're pretty much done. So, you know, I think we understand that, that, that this is our shot at this deal. If and if you don't and and if you win this week, then the next week it becomes the same thing. So I think our league with only six of us, I think I heard Trey say earlier, you know, it's pretty much obvious that you gotta win out. If not, then you know, then you're probably pretty much done. Thank you, folks. Thanks, Doc. Mr. Foreman. Coach Pugh, Skip Foreman from HBCU. Game day, good morning. Hey, Skip, how are you today? Doing fine, Coach. Uh, Coach Oliver told the story about how you didn't think he was going to last this long at Central. <laughs> well, that's because all those guys, you know, they use Central for a stepping stone. You know, uh, Jerry Mack was there. You know, he got, you know, that kind of stuff. He's out making the big bucks. Now, you saw him on TV uh, Saturday night beating up on Alabama. You know, them guys. So, you know, these guys have had all these, you know, these, I hang around here and kind of coach a little while. You know, these guys, they coach for a year or two, and then the next thing you know, they're off making the big bucks. So I was picking at him because he was hanging around, you know, trying to hang around like me. I don't think that's so usual these days. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's hung around and he's built a program that's, trying to do what you did last yeah, year. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that that's, that's bad, Skip. I, I, I want him to be gone by now because, you know, he's hung around now. He best around and got – he's got it going. He's <laughs> actually done a fantastic job at Central. He's high in half. He's high, he hired one of my old offensive line guys back for some years. He's an excellent guy that I coached some years back. And, you know, those guys are all doing a fantastic job. He's got a – New DC, he's got a new offensive line guy. You know, he's kind of moved his pieces around to the place now where he's got them like he wants them. And uh, you add to the fact that he's got a bunch of, you know, transfer guys. You know, I heard a guy talking about he had a freshman player. You know, he's going to have him for three, four more years. I said, if he runs like I thought he might be running, you might not have him for four more years. You know how this thing works. You know, in this day yeah. and age, it's a guy watching everywhere. So, 
you know, we've got our work cut out for us, and Central has actually done a great job of uh, enhancing their uh, depth and, and what have you with, you know, with transfer portal guys, that kind of stuff, which really makes, you know, for them having a, you know, a top-notch squad. Last question, uh, mm -hmm. David Richard. He's he's a handful. Uh, he, he riddled Morgan State, and he's got you next on the schedule. How do you stop him? I'm trying to – I need to go out there and whop him in the head or something. Do something with him. If I need to go hit him before the season starts, maybe he'll swing at me. Or something that we can get, I, and you know, I, I, I really understand that this is a fantastic young man, and uh, you know we've our league. I need our league needs players such as him. You know we need uh, uh, key marquee guys around the, the league that we can talk about and be proud of and that kind of stuff. He's one of those guys. Uh, he can throw it. He's really done a nice job of uh, developing his skills to the point where he's a top-notch quarterback. He's a prospect now as a quarterback, which, you know, is not, you know, very usual out of, out of our league. So I'm excited for him and our league for having him. We need to try to whip him. But at the same time, you know, this guy, you know, is one of the top quarterbacks in FCS. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, Skip. Mia Berry. Hi, Coach Pew. How are you? Hey, Mia. How are you today? I'm doing very well, Coach. I just want to take you back a little bit. So last season, this was a three-point game. Can you talk a little bit about what are you expecting from a Trey Oliver coach team coming into Orangeburg this weekend? Well, let's hope more of the same. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep these guys from coming ahead and blowing us out. They, they're scoring 40 points a game, and we're scoring about 15. So you put those two <laughs> sets of circumstances together, it doesn't add up very well for us. So. You know, we got to figure out how to make this game somewhat competitive. And then at that point, then if we can hang around for a while, then maybe we can, you know, have a shot at the end. But now that's kind of what we're looking probably to be able to, to do, the fact that we need to try to hang around and make this a, and keep it a close football game. Quick follow-up to that, Coach. You mentioned longevity. You are probably the longest tenure HBCU coach at a school at the moment. Can you talk a little bit about what it takes to sustain that type of longevity at a school? And Coach Oliver, I think he's coming for you as well. Yeah, patience, I guess. Um, you know, I don't uh, know how it happened this way. I thought I'd been gone myself. I talk about trade. Heck, I thought about, I thought I'd have been done, you know, maybe 10 years ago. And, it's been a wonderful existence, though, for me. I've had a great time, and I've been fortunate to be able to hang around here and 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 do what I've done for as long as I have. So, you know, I've been, I may be the most fortunate man in the world to be able to do what I've done for as long as I have, and it's been a lot of fun. So, you know, I don't know if there's anything better that you can be a good, uh, uh, you know, a football coach in a good program for a long period of time, had a lot, met a lot of kids, had a lot of friends, had a lot, coached a lot of great people, coached with a lot of great coaches, you know, a lot of that kind of stuff you do when you create relationships that you do over the years. So it's been fun. And, uh, you know, I just hope that I can do it for a little while longer. Thank you, coach. That's all I have. You have a blessed rest of today. Thank you, Mayor. Hi, Miller. Hey, Coach Pugh, good morning to you. How you doing? Morning, Ty. How are you? I'm good. Hey, Coach, uh, a lot of coaches and media and players are flattered by your longevity. Uh, when you step on the field, how do you put that aside when you look across at Trey and know that, you know, he has a lot of admiration for you, but you want to kick his butt one more time? Well, it's just that. You, you, you summed it up in a nutshell right there. We want to whoop each other's panty. I'm looking at him in his eye. You know, he's looking me in mine. You know, ain't no dog going hitting from the side. We looking in each other's face, trying to get at each other. You know what? So that's kind of how it works. And then after the game's over, and I'm gonna pat him on his butt and send him his way, and he can pat me on mine and send me mine, and we go back and we'll be friends again. But during those sixty minutes that we out there on that field, I'm after yeah, his butt. He's after mine too, though. <laughs> yes. We're coming up on the fourth week of like October, and does it seem strange to you that it's your first conference game? It does. We, the fact that we only got six teams in the league kind of creates this kind of deal, and most of the conference games are pushed toward the back. But, uh, you know, at some sometimes I think we need to maybe mix it up a little bit and have a game or two early in the year and then kind of maybe spread some of these games out that way. But 
That's kind of the way this year worked out. I've got a, we, we working on our 2024, 20, 2023 20, schedule right now. We got like a hole where we got two open dates in a row. We got to figure out how to get one of our conference schools maybe to move back up early in our schedule somehow or another to make, you know, a better situation that way. So, you know, that, that gives me a great opportunity to announce, hey, guys, any of y'all in our league got a possibility of being able to move your game with us in 2023, then give me a call because we need to fix some things on our schedule because it's all messed up. But uh, it's like anything else, you know, we do a – uh, you know, we do whatever we can to make the schedule work. The, the big problem I've had here is that we keep having these loaded up front ends of our schedule that knock all the stuffing out of our team earlier. You know, we play the, the South Carolina and the UCF. You add your non-conference games, <laughs> A&T and FAMU, you know, you're talking two at the top. And I can tell you that A&T and FAMU are both pretty good. Even though, And that just tells you how good Central is because Central whooped A&T, you know, early in the year, you know, so – we got our work cut out for us Saturday, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can hang in there with these guys, keep them from beating us up so bad. And you had sort of a – I won't call it a bye week this past week, but you had a non-conference game against Virginia Lynchburg that you handled mm-hmm. easily. Um, what happened in that game that can help you in the North Carolina Central game? Uh, we won. We played a lot of guys, our kids, um, you know, the ones who don't ordinarily get a chance to play a bunch, got a chance to play. Those guys – prepare our football team. You can do one or two things. You're either part of the team or you're part of preparing the team. And in both cases, the enthusiasm that we create from having the opportunity to get a chance to play a little bit for all those guys, you know, is immeasurable as far as, you know, how much excitement it gives us for going out and practicing the next day or two. So we, we're looking forward to actually, you know, getting into the uh, practice mode, the preparation mode for Central. And a large part of that's got to do with the fact that we get some confidence from having played Saturday. And finally, Coach, what is the what is the one key thing that might be the component to win this week? Because last year, Central really hurt itself with penalties. So for mm-hmm. yourself and your team, what's the one key component that's going to go a long way in helping to beat the Eagles this weekend? You know, I kind of agree with Coach Oliver. I think it's probably run versus stopping the run. You know, both of us want to try to run the football. And, uh, you know, if you can, then it makes it just that much more stressful you know, to uh, be able to stop both sides of the of, of a team's offensive attack. So, you know, I think if we can stop their run game, if we can limit them to where they have to maybe throw the football, you know, I think then that makes it really a, a, a easy – it makes our team and both and their team easy to defend. And being that Davis is an option quarterback, does it make it more difficult to stop the run on their RPOs? Of course it does. Yeah, anytime you – Add the quarterback run game to the to the offensive uh, structure, you know, then it creates another plus one kind of situation, whereas they get a little extra that way when he's a runner. So it makes for a tough deal with a guy like that who's – and he's not just a runner, but he's a finish-the-run kind of guy too, which, you know, he'll take a three-yard run and make it a four. You know, that's all it takes sometimes to make, you know, your you know your, your chains move that way. So he makes for a tough kind of guy that way regardless of the fact that, you know, that he can still do all of the stuff, throw it and run. Yeah. Thank you, Coach. Good luck this weekend. Thanks, Ty. All right, Coach Pugh, those are the questions we have for you. Uh, Good luck this week. We'll see you next week. Thanks, Karen. You have a good afternoon. All right. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. South Carolina State is home for the third straight week, and the Bulldogs host the Eagles over North Carolina Central. Kickoff is set for 1.30 p.m. and the game will air live on the MIAC Digital Network on ESPN+. Plus. Actually, no, 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 no. That game will be on ESPN3, correction. Uh, up next, last but not least, we have Morgan State head coach, Coach Damon Wilson. Good morning, Coach Wilson. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing, Karen? Doing well. All right, Coach, can you talk to us a little bit about Thursday's game at North Carolina Central? Oh, indeed. Uh, great atmosphere. Um, one team showed up to play and one team didn't. You know, North Carolina Central are hitting on all cylinders right now. Coach Oliver has done a great job preparing his guys thus far this year. And uh, it gave us an op- gave me an opportunity to see where we really are as a program and the areas that we really need to improve. But uh, that, that's, a, that's a very good FCS program that we played on Thursday. All right, Coach. And then what can we expect from the Bears in the non-conference game against Delaware on Saturday? It doesn't get any easier. You know, you can, we go to the University of Delaware, play them for their homecoming. Um, and, and we need to clean up some things that we 
We uh, we messed up on Thursday, so we won't have some of the same issues uh, this upcoming week. Uh, but we must be physical and stop the run. Uh, and they have the quarterback that can throw it around as well. So, you know, we got a work cut out for us this week. Uh, but we're looking forward to have a great practice week and uh, be ready to roll come Saturday. Awesome. Um, first media questions coming up from Dr. Cavill. This is Kenyatta, Dr. Dills, inside the HBC Sports Lab. Coach Wilson, uh, sure. as you talk about coming in first year coach uh, at this level um, in the MEAC with the Morgan State Bears, uh, obviously, team is learning what it means and what you got to put in to win or win at a consistent level. You got some big wins, go on the conference, uh, have a, you know, tough loss. And then you get in the central game. How do you not allow the emotional psychological part of this game as you're building it, stick with your kids about saying, Oh, well, here we are getting back to who we quote unquote previously were. Well, that's, that's, part of the process you know you want to weed through the, that negative energy and then those negative uh, uh situations mm. want to get better each each day and uh we want to look at the small victories i think special teams uh played pretty good last thursday you know it was an area that we hadn't played uh consistent uh in throughout the season so you know we want to look at those small victories we want to look at continue to get better each week each day at practice and uh, once you when you do all the little things right the wind's going to come you know, it's going to come. Uh, trouble doesn't last always. And I, like I said, I've been through this process before. And, uh, you know, we, we're going to have opportunity to really spend some time with our guys, you know, doing off season and all that good stuff. Uh, but right now we got we to gotta buckle down and, and get ready for University of Delaware. As you had this extended time playing on Thursday, getting into Delaware, uh, that particular matchup, how much of the schedule changed uh, with playing early and now having this in the days? Or do you stick? pretty much to the same schedule you had previously. Uh, we gave them all. We didn't get back here to late Friday, well, early Friday morning, I would say, after that Thursday night game. So we gave them all Friday and Saturday and came to work uh, Sunday, came to work yesterday. And of course, we are on the field uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, so, you know, we, we gave the guys some time off just because of that quick turnaround after playing last Saturday, then turn around and playing again on Thursday. Uh, you know, the guys needed some time to get themselves together and, and get healthy and, uh, and get prepared for this week. What, what is the physical – last question I have, what is the physical matchup when you talk about the uh, line play, when you look at the team on film with Delaware, whether it's offensive, defensively, uh, how strong do you see them uh, compared to what you've seen in the past? That's probably one of the strengths of their program. You know, their offensive line, uh, some big guys, they're physical. Uh, defensive line is not as, as big, but they're very active. They bring different – give you different looks. Uh, that you have to pick up in pass protection as well as uh, the run game. They run a lot of stunts and that sort of thing up front that we have to account for. So, like I said, we're going to definitely have our work cut out for us, but uh, we're going to put a game plan together uh, to give us a chance to be successful. Certainly. Good luck this week, Coach. I appreciate you. And thank you. James Hill. Coach Wilson, I hope you and the fellas are well. Can you talk a little bit about playing up the atmosphere sharing the HBCU brand, uh, the MEAC brand, with those football fans up in, in Delaware? Uh, I think I think it's important. You know, you have, you have a, there's only a short ride for us, uh, so we want to go represent the conference the right way, represent our university the right way, and show the brand of football that we play. You know, we're FCS program as well, you know, and, and, and we, we have a very competitive conference. Uh, so we want to go up and represent the right way and, and show that we can, you know, Play, play with uh, some other programs in SCS. Uh, talk a little bit about continuing to build your program. Uh, student athletes are earning education. That's what it's all about. And the football is getting better and players are developing. I, I think that's, that, I mean, that's key. You know, that's key to make sure that they're doing what they need to do off the field, but also understanding the importance of, to do what you need to do in the weight room and the film in the film room and everything that we talk about. Uh, in the film room, be able to carry it over to the football field and execute on Saturday. That's one thing I was really impressed uh, about with the guys when we had film review on Sunday. You know, those guys were able to acknowledge the mistakes that they made and and and, and basically correct themselves. Uh, of course, a day late, but we corrected ourselves. And that's good when they're able to identify what they did wrong and, and how to correct those issues. So once again, it's not going to get any any easier for us. You know, but we're going to continue to focus on Morgan State and you know, the guys that we have here uh, to get better. Coach, when you play in a league and there's six teams and, and it's it's very crucial every week, just talk about, you know, playing at a high level and how important that is. 
Well, listen, I mean, it's interesting. This is this is definitely uh, a little new for me with regards to, you know, you started off with the non-conference games, and then you have a, a couple conference games, then I'm going back to non-conference play, and I got to finish the season up with some conference games. So it's, it's a unique situation. Um, you know, you almost look at it almost as a preseason mindset, but understanding, you know, you lose a MEAC game, you're probably, uh, you know, just trying to play for a, a good record. You know, you're probably going to be out of the uh, the hunt for any championship just because there are six only six teams in the conference. So, you know, each week we must be hitting on all cylinders, definitely in conference play to give, give us a chance. Thank you. Have a great week. Yes, sir. Hi, Miller. Hey, Coach Wilson, good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How are you doing? I'm good, Coach. Uh, Delaware is a tough team. We know that. And, and they play some HBCU teams, but you also have a like opponent in Towson State. If you take a look at that tape, what, what do you see about them that you're most concerned about? Like I said, they're physical. You know, we played Towson really, really tough. Four quarters end up losing uh, in the fourth quarter of the game. So going into this game, we want to have a chance to, to win in, 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 in the fourth. You know, so we want to stay stay close and, and make it a dog fight um, and give us an opportunity to win the ball and, and win the ball game in the fourth quarter. Uh, Towson, they were really physical with Towson up front. You know, they, they did a good job with, with Towson's quarterback who gave us a little problem. Uh, and, and then stopping him, but uh, you know we got to we got to match the intensity, and you know? also it's homecoming for those guys. So the atmosphere is going to be great, you know. So we have an opportunity to play in front of a large crowd again, and uh, and hopefully we put on a better performance. Coach, you step outside the conference, then you step back in the conference. How <laughs> how much can you still be a factor in the MEAC race as going as we go down the stretch? We want we want to control the things that we can control. You know, we want to like I say get 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 a W this week against University of Delaware and also prepare for South Carolina State. You know, they're coming in by the following week. So once again, it doesn't get easier for us. We understand that you lose a conference game, it's going to be it's, uh, it's, uh, it's tough slating for you, you know, when you lose one game in and, and, and the MEAC. Uh, however, we want to continue to, to, to fight and compete and let the chips fall where they may at the end. Back in early September, we talked about, uh, you mentioned one of the most important parts of your team this year had to be the buy-in aspect of it. So as you have entered into October, where are you with that in terms of your team buying into the Damon Wilson program? It's still a, it's still a process. And I think those guys are listening. Those guys are, are doing what we're asking them to do. Now we got to teach them how to win. And teaching them how to win is not just uh, going to study hall for eight hours a week. It may be you might do nine hours. You know, teaching them how to win, maybe getting that extra work after practice. Uh, so that that's what I'm looking for. Uh, to seeing the guys turn that switch and actually put that extra work in, not just the inf not just the work that we're requiring them to do, but the stuff that really makes a difference is is that extra work uh, on and off the football field. What are the differences you found in your first MEAC season that might be different from the CIAA at this point? I um, mean, the most glaring thing, I guess, is just the number of teams. You know, because you, you know you have more opportunities, and I'm using the word preseason, but you have more uh, non-conference opponents. That, that don't impact your chances to play uh, in the championship. Whereas in CIAA, you come out of that, that, uh, that first or second week, you know, you're in a conference play throughout. Uh, so you got straight eight straight conference games, and that's a, that's a different deal because uh, if you lose one of those, you, you, may, you, know, you may be out of it early as well. Uh, the difference is you just have a number of teams uh, competing for the same thing. And finally, Coach, despite your record right now, where would you grade – uh, your coaching at this point. Midway we were great. My coaching yeah. uh, at this point, at this point, I think it's, it's we're, we're right where we, not where we want to be, but understand, I understand the position that we're in. Uh, we have work to do. Uh, I think we're getting better uh, each week in certain areas. Uh, but once again, we haven't played the whole full quarter uh, of a game, but I think far as great, you know, we're, 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 we're moving in the right direction. That's for sure. Okay. Coach, thank you. Good luck this weekend. Yes, sir. You got it, Tom. All right, Coach Wilson, thank you so much for your time today. We will see you next week, and good luck on Saturday. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Take care. The Bears travel to Newark, Delaware, to play the University of Delaware in a 3 p.m. matchup on Saturday. The game can be seen live on Flow Football. At this time, we'd like to conclude our video conference. But before we do, as always, thank you to the media members who joined us. Thank you to the ones who watch afterwards and the MEAC Sports Information Officers who've helped us with today's call. The MEAC would also like to thank its corporate partners. The next call will be next Monday, October 24th, beginning at 10 a.m. And as always, for up-to-date news on the MEAC football and other sports, log on to MEACsports.com. 
Follow MEAC Sports on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and then subscribe to the MEAC Digital Network on YouTube. Once again, everybody, thank you for being with us today and have a great football week.